Hey there, I'm Colin, and today I'm gonna make soy sauce at home. It was last Christmas that I first read the Noma Guide to Fermentation and the idea of making soy sauce at home hit me and I just knew I had to do it. And as I was going through the recipe and learning about all the equipment needed to do it, I realized that either A, I didn't want to spend all that money and all that stuff, but also B, uh, it'd be super fun to make it anyway. So that set me off on a journey to making my own koji tray, kiyoki, grain crusher, setting up a fermentation chamber, just so many things. And I made videos about all that. You can go look in the description and um, see all those videos. But today, after months of building things and trial and error, I'm finally ready just to make soy sauce and I couldn't be more excited. So I know that there's gonna be two different kinds of audiences for this video. Some of you are spectators. You're watching to see how soy sauce is made, maybe learn something, or you're just enjoying the process of seeing what Colin's up to. Um, and then I know that some of you out there are actually on your own path to making soy sauce at home. And um, this video might be helpful to, for you to watch before uh, you make your own soy sauce. It'll probably be most helpful to learn what not to do because I usually mess up my first time. So. Uh, maybe my you can learn from my mistakes. Now for you spectator folks, don't worry, this video is not gonna just be all super nitty gritty level for the people who wanna do it themselves. I'm gonna kinda do the first half of the video. It's gonna be mostly a high overview of the interesting stuff. And then some notes about equipment and ingredients and where I got things and alternatives to making all this stuff. I'll put all that stuff at the end and I'm gonna record that when I'm kinda done making it so that way I can give you more informed opinions. So today, right now, let's just get into making some soy sauce. All right, so soy sauce, as you might imagine, starts off with soybeans. So these are dried and this is about two pounds and I use most of the package of another package. I got these to make a second batch for doing a little bit different kind of soy sauce. We'll see how this one goes first. You take soybeans and then you soak them in water for about four hours to rehydrate them and then they double back in size. And I'm assuming this is about how big they were before they were dehydrated. Then what we're gonna do is take some of these wheat berries and we're going to toast them in the oven and give them a really nice dark colored where they almost look burnt and that's what will give this soy sauce really a lot of that color that you that dark color you see in soy sauce comes from the roasting process of roasting these wheat berries okay so when you make soy sauce wheat and soybeans are what koji eats to ferment and make your soy sauce now koji is a Interestingly enough, domesticated mold or fungus, and that's what is kind of the magic behind soy sauce and sake and some other fermented Japanese products that we all know and love. Now, like we're doing with the wheat, we need to uh, toast that for color and flavor, and then we're gonna crush the wheat so it can, the koji can get in there and get at the starches it wants to eat. Similarly, we need to cook down these soybeans a little bit and make them less tough so that way the koji can get in to all the nutrition that's inside of those beans so it has something to eat. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for one hour. And I wanna get it soft but not like mushy where it's like really gross. I just want a little bit softer. So as this comes to a boil, it's gonna get some frothy stuff on top here. Go ahead and skim that off. We don't need that. All right, so now that these soybeans are almost done and my wheat's almost done, can you see me behind that steam? I'm gonna sanitize everything else that this stuff's gonna touch because it's all gonna be underneath cooking temperatures from now on. And the only kind of organisms that I want growing here in this soy sauce is koji. So I'm gonna use a product called Star Sand. If you're into home brewing or fermentation, you've probably seen this before. Whatever you use to sanitize, follow the instructions on the packaging and go for it. This, you kind of get sudsy, wipe it down, rinse it off, and you're good to go. I'm not gonna show this. You get the idea, I'm gonna clean things well. That's, that's about what I'm saying. You gotta make sure that you have all your stuff ready to go and clean. So that way, again, Koji is the only thing growing in this here soy sauce and you don't get other bacteria or other funguses and stuff like that. 
Okay, so these soybeans are almost done. I'm gonna go strain them and let them cool down and I'm gonna pull the wheat out of the oven. All right, so those soybeans are all dried off and the wheat came out real nice. Uh, I might have burned it. They said, don't be afraid to burn it. Uh, just go really dark to where you're afraid it's almost burnt. I'm like, this might actually be burnt. So we'll have to see. But this is all cooled down. It's about room temperature. I got the soybeans cooled down to room temperature. All we gotta do is grind, mix them together, and then put in our koji spores. So now is the inaugural run for this homemade grain crusher. So we'll see how this thing works out. Again, it's not gonna be 100%. I know that going in, I'm hoping for like 60, 70%, we'll see. If I have to get in there with a mortar and pestle and smash some things, so be it. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so off camera, I hooked up my drill and tried to run it and the rollers were actually binding on each other and they couldn't spin because they were stuck on each other. So I need to take these two tabs for this back roller and adjust where this roller goes in and out to see if I can make sure that the roller spin freely. I should have checked that before I got everything all hooked up. So my bad, let me just go on ahead and make sure at no point do the rollers bind up on each other. All right, so I way overestimated that grain crusher and how hard that project would be, even though there were other people going, I don't know if that's gonna work. <laughs> but you know what? As far as failures go on a project, the food's all still okay. I just now have to use the food processor and crush this. It's not gonna ruin the end product. We're all good. So yeah, I need to revisit that, figure that out and make that work better because I just don't have time tonight. I started this at about 7.30 p.m. and it's about 10 o'clock now and I've got processes to do still yet. So I'm gonna do the food processor. I'm not even bummed. Like, honestly, like I said, as far as failures go, this is the best kind of failure because I didn't mess up the final product. So I'm good. <laughs> so all we do is add all of our toasted wheat seeds right on in here. Wheat berries, rather. And we're just gonna pulse this for about a minute till we get a nice looking crush. Again, not trying to make flour here. We're just trying to get all these holes, all the husks cracked. All right, how do you put this stinking lid on? Has anyone ever gotten the lid right on their food processor the first try? Because I never have. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've been doing this for probably more like two minutes because I'm just not seeing all the grains getting whacked and it's not really turning into flour yet. So that's a good thing. Like there's some wiggle room here in the food processor, but I think I'm gonna call it just because I don't want to turn this into flour and go too far. All right, so now I need to take our soybeans and thoroughly mix them with the cracked wheat. And the recipe, they want you to, again, measure and make sure these are in the correct ratio to one another. I just did that off camera. I'm gonna just put this together now. Yeah, and at this point, you're gonna wanna wear gloves because you don't want anything on your hands to be getting into this stuff. Again, we wanna keep everything sterile. I had this bowl sanitized and, and all of that. So we're good to go. So this has a super interesting aroma. It's got like a burlapy, earthy caramel thing going on. It's really interesting. I think it's interesting because a lot of soy sauces that are commercially made are not brewed and they don't go through like this toasting process. They don't even have wheat in it. And I think that that wheat and the toasting process is where you get a lot of these interesting aromas and probably a lot of interesting flavor. So that's mixed super well. Okay, so I've got a slightly damp tea towel that I'm putting in our koji tray. And I'm gonna add in all of this mixture in here. We're gonna spread it out. This is the perfect stinking size. It could be wider to give more surface area for the koji, but 
I'm telling you, it all fits in here, which I didn't even think about the size and like really double checking and making sure that this size was gonna work out. So that's a beautiful serendipitous thing to discover at this point in time. So yeah, for equipment, I really only failed on one element of this and that makes me super happy. Okay, now I've got my Koji spores right here and we are going to inoculate this mixture by lightly tapping our strainer here and the Koji spores will just fall through. I just wanna give a nice light dusting over everything. And just making sure everything gets covered. And you don't really want to shake because way too much comes out. You don't want to, you don't need to use that much. These guys are going to multiply and do their thing. So yeah, don't like whack it or you got to be really gentle. It's way too much is going to come out. These guys are going to do their thing and they're going to multiply. Like you, a lot goes a long way. All right. So all that we have to do now is put this in the fermentation chamber and then check back in in 24 hours. Okay, so I'm just now sitting down to edit this footage and I realized that I lost the footage of me explaining what happened after I put that koji tray in the fermentation chamber. So 24 hours after that tray went into the fermentation chamber, I then came back and stirred everything up and broke it up because it gets kind of hard and all clumped together. And then I formed like two little mounds in there. And then I went on ahead and put it back in for another 24 hours. So 48 hours in, I then got a brine prepared. So after you get that mixture all inoculated with the koji, we put a salt water brine on it. So that's what I'm about to make next. Okay, so to create the brine, we're gonna take half the amount of water that the recipe calls for. So the recipe calls for uh, 1.9 kg of water. So we're gonna do 950 grams and we're gonna dissolve 365 grams of salt in here. And then we're gonna put the rest of the 950 grams of water in here and get it all cooled down. And then we're gonna mix it with our koji mixture over there inside the cedar bucket. So I'm gonna just dissolve this salt and combine the water and we'll start getting everything in the kiyoki. Okay, so our salt water brine has cooled down to 95 degrees so it won't kill anything off here. And I have put some water in my Kiyoki to re-swell it, because it's been a while since it was swollen. So that's why you'll see some water on there. And I dumped that out. And now it's time to break up this Koji mixture, get it all settled in here, and then add the brine. So let's do that. You'll see it gets like really hard and clumpy. Ooh, and those wisps of dust, that's a good sign. Those are Koji spores. Now you can actually harvest your own Koji spores which is awesome and might be something I do another time. But oh my goodness, it smells so good in here. It's like a deep roasty wheat umami kind of thing going on. This is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up. Spread everything out nice and even in here. And now I'm gonna add my salt water brine. And I'm going to stir to combine and make sure everything is in the brine. All right, so now I need to cover the top of the Maromi, which is now the salt water brine and all this stuff. I need to place a piece of saran wrap on top so it's in contact with the surface. And then we're going to put, this is a nylon mesh bag, I think used for like milking nuts. And I have a paracord and a little uh, toggle clamp dealio. And yeah, you just want, you can use a towel or something like that to cover it up. You want something that is breathable and loose. You know, let me pre-tighten that a little bit. Okay, so this is good. So we're gonna leave it down here in the basement because it's a little bit cooler than normal temperature and it's not that humid down there, so it'll be perfect. And we're gonna leave this for four months. I was gonna do a year at first, but I think we're gonna just stick with four months. Um, and for the first two weeks, we're gonna give it a stir once a day 
And after that, we'll stir it once a week. And every time you stir, you're supposed to give it a taste to check on its progress. And it's supposed to get more delicious and more savory and more roasty every single week. Um, there may be mold growing on top of the shoyu, um, but it may be just the koji sprouting again. And so if you don't know the difference, which I probably won't, you're supposed to just scrape that off and keep going. Um, supposedly after four months, it's gonna look like dark brown, thick and chunky applesauce. And that's when we're gonna press it and get all of the um, absorbed juices pushed out and that'll be the soy sauce. So that's really exciting. So anyways, here we are. We're good to go. Uh, this soy sauce is, we just got to wait four months. So this is super exciting. I finally started soy sauce. All right. So yesterday I finished up my first ever batch of soy sauce. So cheers. And it's very fitting that I'm toasting you with this sake because this is made with um, koji. That's how they do the fermentation to be able to make sake and they use rice. So they're kind of like cousins. I don't know. They're very closely related. Okay, so if you are thinking about making your own soy sauce at home, um, I'm gonna just walk through some of the equipment first and then some ingredients and let you know some things I learned along the way and um, some more details about ways that you don't have to build everything. So to start off with, I highly recommend not making your own grain crusher. That was a failure. There are some things I can try to fix it, but if you're gonna do this, um, either just use a blender or a food processor to get started, and that'll be fine for your first couple soy sauces or getting into fermentation. If you want to go further and you're going to be making this stuff all the time, yeah, invest in a nice grain crusher or even buy some of the home brewing grain crushers that are about 80 bucks and you'll be great. So that would be my recommendation for a grain crusher. Um, you do not need to build your own wooden kiyoki. It's actually pretty easy if you make straight slats like this and you can watch that video if you want to learn how to make it. It's fairly simple, but you could just use a glass jar. You don't have to use a wooden vessel. And that's also true for the koji tray. That does not have to be wood. It's just fun and really nice to be wood, but it could just be a standard baking pan that you already have. So you don't need to buy that if you already have like a nine by 13 baking pan. In fact, that would have probably been a little bit better for my situation just because I made mine too skinny and I couldn't do like three rows and get everything really spread out. Everything was really vertically high in my pan. So, you know, that could have been better if I had a wider pan. Uh, the fermentation chamber, I really like this setup. It worked really well. However, I did something wrong. Even the recipe I was using in the book, they said that you really wanna stick the temperature probe inside of your mixture, the wheat and the soybeans on the inside, because that way it can keep the food at the optimum temperature as opposed to the surrounding atmosphere. So the surrounding atmosphere might be too hot and the food is generating heat itself inside of there. So that's something that I need to work on for next time. Um, that may be why when I was pouring in everything into here, we had all these spores flying out because it probably went to the sporification spot. And that might be a problem with creating off flavors. So we'll see how that ends up. For the ingredients, I just used soybeans off of Amazon, um, and I also got uh, the wheat off of Amazon. So you'll wanna just search for whole wheat berries. If there's any grain mills near you or you know anyone that grows wheat or a farmer, go that route, it'll be great. Um, for the, as far as the variety of wheat I used, I used einkorn wheat. Um, so you can Google that. I tried to do it as inexpensive as possible because there's some exotic wheat grains that can be extremely expensive. Um, and I ended up getting two pound bags of each and I used the majority of each one of those bags uh, for this recipe in particular. I also got a whole nother set, two extra bags of each so I can make a couple different variations of soy sauce. So because I had that sporification issue with this batch, I'm gonna make another batch and this time I'm gonna use glass. I'll just use my food processor. I'm gonna use the baking pan. So it'll kind of be like the other way to do it. I probably won't make a video about that, but if you want me to, uh, let me know in the comments and I might uh, dedicate some time to going over uh, my second time making soy sauce. So yeah, I'm gonna just stir this every day 
for the first two weeks and then I'm gonna start it once a week and I'm gonna let this go for four months. I was originally gonna try a year, but now I'm gonna just do four months and see how this turns out. Um, and you're supposed to taste as you go along. It's supposedly gonna get more nuanced and roasty and more delicious. All right, so I'm so happy that I've got my first batch done. This feels amazing. I'm so proud to have finally gotten to the stage, even though this is definitely not perfect in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things that did not go well along the way. I still think it's gonna end up being an awesome final product, and I learned a heck of a lot while I did this. And I've got some really cool gear to show for it, and I know how to use my fermentation chamber even better. So that'll really help as I do other ferments and even other soy sauces or show yous in the future. So thank you so much for joining me on this wild ride. And for all you who are Koji and show you experts, please correct me because I'm about to do a second batch where I tried to uh, remedy the errors of my ways from this batch. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, cheers. Joker. And he loves joking and makes me 